record of it. So we have been exploring type, and we also are looking at how computers work, and it all comes back to circuits and switches and on-off states. And we saw ASCII, and ASCII is a coding scheme. UTF-8, the first part of UTF-8, incorporates ASCII. UTF-8 is the world leading world's leading coding scheme. And, um, and so we saw in that coding scheme right, that the capital letter A in decimal is 65 and binary is this and hexadecimal is that. Saw a little bit about how numeral systems work. And so we could in Go create a little program like this where we store a string. When we were looking at the types, we saw that the types of Golang, like a rune is an alias for an N32, which is four bytes. And, uh, and so we have this string, and all of our characters are stored as runes, or a slice of runes. That's what a string is, is a slice of rune. And these are each, you know, one character. And so with our slice of rune, we could cast that X to a slice of rune. So we've got a slice of rune. We could print that out. And then we could range over that, get each of the individual values in their index position. And then we could print out those values. So it might be a little cleaner to do it like this. Get rid of the index. Get rid of this. And we could print it in percent decimal and then percent binary and then get rid of that and now run it and uh, binary is missing I got to pass in a V so we have the decimal representation of A B C D E and we have the binary representation which is kind of cool and if we wanted hexadecimal we could add percent zero x and then just add one more v and I did something wrong percent zero x percent o x percent pound x it's been a while there we go and let's just look at the go fumped package and percent pound percent pound what is it it was a percent pound o x here we have Percent pound X, percent pound capital X. Oh, so we just want to get rid of that zero. Percent, it's just percent. Percent pound X, percent pound X. Oh, that's what I've got. And so just to finish up our numeral system thing, we saw decimal, we saw binary. Decimal, we saw binary. If we were to do hexadecimal, which is base 16, hexa, hexa is 6, having 6, deci is 10, deci 1 tenth. So hexadecimal 6, 10. 16. So if we're doing base 16 as a numeral system, 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1, 16 to the 2, 16 to the 3. So this is the 16's place. This is the 256's place, 16 times 16. This is the 4096's place. And we could use the letters. We need 16 characters, but we can't. We, at 10, we go into double characters, which doesn't make sense. Right? So at 10, we switch to A, B, C, D, E, F to represent 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 0 through 15 is 16 numbers. And so here we have three 256s, eight 16s, and uh, F is uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 uh, ones. So 38F in hexadecimal. I saw this license plate on a car. Anybody want to guess what car it was? Is a Porsche. What make? 911. Guess what 38F means in hexadecimal? Hexa to des. Where's my converter? I've got his videos. Looks like college. Enter hex number 38F. Convert 911. So the license plate on the, the Porsche was 0x38f. The 0x is kind of the signature for hexadecimal. Isn't that interesting? How many people feel like that's not interesting? I'm totally confused. It's interesting, but not super applicable. Yeah, I think it takes a little bit, and then when you encounter it, you're like, oh, I can totally simplify that problem by just checking it. Where it is totally applicable is if you do not understand everything I just shared in the last two videos, computers run on electricity, it's all about switches and on-off states, and then people have created coding schemes, and in the history of computers, Man, in the 80s, it was like mass confusion because there's all these different com coding schemes. Like northern Japan had a different coding scheme from southern Japan. And people from one area in Japan would send a document to people in another area of Japan. They'd be on totally different machines and it wouldn't open because <laughs> they were using, you know, to read the zeros and ones, it meant something else to their machine. So it's all about electricity on off, circuits in a certain on off state, and coding schemes people have created. UTF-8 is now the world's most popular coding scheme created by the same people who created Go, right? If you don't understand all of the on-off switches, translates to the zeros and the ones, which are the bits and the bytes and the kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, and then the numeral systems, that here's decimal and here's binary and here's how you count in binary, and then this is how we represent the letter A in ASCII, which is, you know, the first part, you know, ASCII's been subsumed into UTF-8, so it's UTF-8, the first part of UTF-8 is ASCII, right? And you represent the letter A, with, you know, with this arrangement of binary on-off switches, which in decimal translates to this. And you know how to get to 65 now. We got one in the twos place, and then we have the fours place, and then we have the 8s, and then the 16s, 32, 64, and I'd counted wrong. So we have the 1s, 1s, place, and this would be the 2s, 4s, 8, 16, 32, 64. So we got 164 and 1, 1. Hey, that's 65, right? Because it's base 2, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3. Like you got that, and then you no longer have this massive hole in your computer knowledge, and you understand what bytes are. It all translates back to on-off switches, you know, things in an on-off state. That's I think where it becomes useful. Otherwise, you're like, all right. I think that was a good little exploration. <laughs>